Hello, it's that time again. Get up, get off the couch, and tackle your own to-do list. Welcome to another episode of Just Ask Bob Live. I am your host, Bob Asadorian. For over 11 years on this very network, Just Ask Bob has always been pushing two goals. Number one, DIY, do it yourself. To get up, get off the couch, and once and for all, tackle that never-ending to-do list around your own home. Everything from putting up some shelves in the garage, installing a faucet, replacing a broken tile, right to the big guns. Kitchens, basements, man caves, backyard decks, you name it. Now, second goal, if for whatever reason you cannot tackle your own to-do list, no time, no inclination, maybe the ladder is not tall enough to reach that second story roof, that's fine. Episode by episode, You have my word. I will always work to demystify the process behind finding and hiring the right contractor for you and your home. Now, I've coined that phrase, for you and your home, meaning not every contractor is going to be the right contractor for you and your home or for you and your family. Specifically, the foundation of it is a license. doesn't matter what municipality you live in. You have to be careful and research. Some municipalities have a licensing system. Some currently do not. Some may institute one next year. You always have to check. My particular municipality, yes indeed. You're gonna see my license up on the screen now. Master Building Repair, City of Hamilton. I'm very proud of that license. Unlike reality television, I can guarantee you, today's host is actually licensed. Now why does it matter? Let's take a moment to talk about the licensing process. In the absence of a license, this is important, and for example, some of our neighboring municipalities do not require a license. So that person you've hired could have yesterday been working at the Big B convenience store or the gas station, and nothing wrong with that. However, today, he's swinging a hammer in your home, he's tackling structure, tackling plumbing, he can cause an awful lot of damage. He needs the license. Before a contractor, prospective contractor, can even apply or head to City Hall to write the license. They must pass a police clearance. So that must speak volumes. You know, open your mind's eye and think about that now. This fellow you've hired may very well be in your home from before you leave for work and may still be there swinging a hammer after you've come back home from work. You have valuables, you have family. So number one, it's the police clearance pass. Number two, on the book right behind me, the Ontario Building Code, the Bible for Home Rentals, and you builds in the province of Ontario. Contractor must pass, prospective contractor must pass a minimum by 70% a two hour open book examination on the building code. So at least when you hire him, you know he's passed the test. Then he must prove to the city that he carries minimum two million liability insurance coverage. And he must attest to that in writing each and every year for his renewal. So now you know what it takes to be legitimate and what, it t- what can happen if he's not legitimate. Again, as a contractor, he can be tampering with anything in your home. Wiring potentially, if he brings in a licensed electrician, structural work with a BCIN design drawing and a city permit, uh, permitted work, hopefully with a permit from the municipality that you live in. Again, it really, really matters to start the relationship on a proper foundation. Again, always, in addition to that, ask for references. Forget about three. Any phony can pick up three false references and maybe have family or friends vouch for them. Minimum a dozen references and call them. So if this prospective contractor is quoting you on a deck and a fence and all the references are for kitchens, basements, and bathrooms, that doesn't cut it. What you're having the item quoted for, what the prospective work will be, the references have to match up with that and there has to be a good deal of them. Hit them with hard questions. Maybe even ask if you can visit. This way you can judge and see the past work that the contractor has done in person. So please take it from me. Always avoid what I've coined as the overcharging and crooked unlicensed contractor or the grumpy contractor. Have you met him before? He's in your home. You're paying him. You ask him a question. He barks the answer. You ask him another question. He barks even louder. Take a hint, scoot, get away. That's not the way it should be. During the estimating process, it is absolutely critical that you push your contractor. 
Test his patience. Ask him for revision of the estimate. Ask him for another revision if need be. Hit him with every question you can. Determine if the personality is going to click before you hire him or her, not afterwards. Now, Just Ask Bob Live is always in two parts. Part one, in response to a viewer's email or phone call at times or even a tweet. We put together, because I am a contractor, I do have job sites I tend to every day. We put together renovation footage from my real job sites, real rentals, and we use that in response to answer the viewer's question. Nothing beats that. Nothing's better than just doing it verbally. Hands on, sawdust kicking, hammer swinging, we'll answer your renovation question. Part two, get your home rental questions ready. Ask Bob at cable14.com, tweet at just ask Bob, or pick up the phone and call. After all, I'm old school, 905-645-645. 3232. And we have a call in win contest. Call in and win one of four $50 Home Depot gift cards. Bob's gift to you to get you up and off the couch to tackle your own to do list. All you have to do is call in to the live show, hit Bob with your hardest rental question. For full contest details, please go to cable14.com slash Bob contest. And best of luck to you. It's a little something you can use to buying some materials to kick off your to-do list. I want to put out a thank you to everybody. 11 years now, I wouldn't have had a single episode without you, the viewers. It's your questions that create the rental footage. Speaking of that, we have the email that kicks it off today. Help Bob, can you do a teaching episode on how to set a fence, gate, post in concrete? I need to get this done before the ground freezes. Stefan from Hamilton. Yes, sir, you do. Thank you for the email. Uh, perfect time of year now as well. I mean, you still have time before the ground freezes, but I can tell you if it was as cold as today, you might be freezing. I spent a good seven, eight hours outside today. I can tell you it was cold. Now, some quick tips before the footage kicks off. Traditional way to do this is real concrete. You buy it in a bag, you crack it in half in the wheelbarrow, you mix it. Now, for those that are lazy out there, there is a concrete uh, material that you just dump in the hole and you water it. Please avoid it, avoid it. You have to use some effort, you have to try to do your best and you have to spend your money accordingly. Do not use that stuff, it's always, it, I always recommend against it. It's not gonna last, it's not gonna hold. You're gonna end up having shifting of your post, potentially sagging of the gate, nothing but issues. And actually, it's very expensive. I believe it's eight to ten dollars a bag, whereas regular concrete you can pick up to three, for three to four dollars. So again, old-fashioned concrete, mix it, put it in, get your hole as close to four feet as you can, uh, spade it at the bottom in order to make it a larger diameter at the bottom. So you want to key it into the earth. So as you dig down, flare, flare. That's the word Bob's struggling with. Flare the very bottom so that when the concrete sets, it's keyed into the earth. When frost heave comes and it wants to lift, it's not gonna slide up easily because you made the bottom wider so the earth actually holds it. Another quick tip, call before you dig. It's a free service. Now, if this is already an existing situation, you're replacing a post, you're okay, but if you're shifting the location of the post or you're doing a new build with a fence or gate, you must call before you dig. It's Ontario Call Before You Dig. It's easy, you can look it up online. It's a free service. They're gonna come down to your property and they're gonna use a variety of spray paint colors to mark for utilities. Everything from TV cable, telephone line, gas lines, hydro, etc. Enjoy the footage. We'll be back and we'll be back live. Welcome to our job site. Beautiful Hamilton Mountain location. Nice enough day, supposed to warm up in the afternoon. Today's project is going to feature a gate replacement and especially a post. The problem is actually the original post was only embedded into the ground in 12 inches of concrete. Believe it or not, a foot of concrete. That's not the way to do it. Some supplies you'll need for a project like this, a wheelbarrow, 
bags of concrete, drill, some power tools. This is where the original post had rotted. And then there was a fence section connecting to that fence. And then from the post, the gate. I want to start off by welcoming Ethan. He's our new co-op student. Ethan, big warm shout out to the viewers. How's it going? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm 16, I play football, and I'm working carpentry with Bob right now. How do you like learning all the trade skills? It's really fun, it's good. I like being outdoors and hands-on. It's my type of thing. Better than being in a class? Oh yeah, 100%. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to school you. We're going to school you here. Right. Speaking of schooling, I'm just going to take a moment to show off that tool. Want to raise it a little bit? Yep. Okay, that's a clamshell digger. Now, we'll show you later on, possibly in some footage, some other alternatives to digging a post hole. Ethan, let's pull some dirt out of there. It's just about done. So you'll notice the force. He pushes it down really well. And then you have to scoop in to pull out the dirt. It saves on the time and effort of renting a post hole digger. And believe me, those are backbreaking as well. So it really depends on your budget, depends on how many post holes you have to dig. Ethan, slow down a moment. I'm going to get in there, try to show the viewers exactly what you're doing. Okay, scoop. And eject. Scoop. And eject. As you can see by the pile, we've been working on this well before we started recording today's episode. Most of the work was done with the shovel, but once you get a few feet down, it's not easy. You have to use the clamshell digger. It does a lot better of a job. All right, now we have the important task of backfilling. We got to get as much of that earth back in as we can. All right, Ian. Nice full four shovels, one on each side. Ethan's using the shovel to tamp it down. And then don't forget, keep readjusting the sauna tube. You want your 4x4 four four centered to the sauna tube. The sauna tube is the cardboard form that you're going to be pouring your concrete into. Okay, Ethan, give it a nice tamp now with the old fence board. You have to tamp the soil all the way around. We don't want air pockets. We don't want voids. Good job, Ethan. You got lots to do. Promise, Bob, you're going to pick up the pace. Oh, yeah, of course. Awesome.
strong framing because this is going to be filled up with concrete. We got a 12 inch sauna tube. We worked very hard to get this level to get it plumb. So by having it braced, it's not going anywhere. As you can see, it just held up my weight. So we simply used two two by fours. We attached to the existing post, ran it all the way across, stopped it at the wall. Overnight during the drying process, if this isn't stabilized and it isn't braced, you're gonna have nothing but trouble. It's gonna end up moving on you. So it's very important, it's critical. Now, for those of you at home that want an alternative to using the clamshell digger, a couple of moments now, we're gonna show you some footage. This is from a long time ago, where Bob actually had a full head of black hair. We're gonna have two men on the post hole auger, and you make your own decision. This was an awful lot of work to use, but the post hole auger is a lot of work as well, the gas powered one. Enjoy the clip. Okay, always important too, this is the gas. Crank it all the way while you pull on the cable. Let's do it. Now a heads up, both my men here are not experienced in mixing concrete. Uh, Josh has been with us for a short while, but he's learned how to master painting, he's learned framing, he's learned how to lay ceramic tile, he's definitely learned how to work with mold, and everyone's going to learn together today, both Josh and Ethan, and of course the viewers at home. Josh, you feeling strong? Oh yeah. Alright, dump two bags, or one bag at a time, and then spear it open like I taught you. Now for those of you at home, you, you can see the wheelbarrow's been wet. Oh Josh, Josh, go sideways, the short way. No, 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 right in the middle, up and down. There you go, Ethan's got it. Yeah, hard, one more time. Perfect, now split the bag. So as I was saying a moment ago, you want the wheelbarrow wet. You don't want to begin mixing in a dry wheelbarrow. No, no, Josh, just flip the bag over. Yeah, you don't have to go through it with your hands. Perfect. Make sure it's fully empty. Okay, chuck it to the side. One, once more now. Another bag. We'll do two at a time. I'm going easy on you. I've done as much as five in there. Now, spear it. Seth, right through the center, short way. Yeah, keep going. Okay, you should be able to rip the bag. Or flip it over. There you go. Just the easiest way to empty it. Perfect. Now, you're very experienced at Durabon 90 and mixing mud for our drywalling jobs. Yes. This is a little bit different. Uh, dump some water in. I'll tell you when. Now too much water, Josh, will weaken the concrete mix. Yep. Not enough water and the concrete won't be hydrated enough to dry correctly. So you gotta have just the right amount, but go, go on, I'll give you a tip. Okay, that's enough for now, because we can always add more concrete. All right guys, spin it up. Good job, pull it up from the bottom and spin it up. A mistake people typically make is too much water. Water makes it easier to mix. Less water makes it more difficult to mix. As long as you don't run out of bags, you can always, if it's too soupy, you know in the trade we call it soupy, if it's too soupy, you can add more mix. Unless you run out of mix. Keep going guys, just take your time, keep spinning it up. 
Now for those of you at home that need a few simple bags mixed, maybe to replace a post, maybe to repair something. As I can't say this often enough, when you cut the crooked and overcharging contracts are out of the equation, you save an awful lot of money. These quick reek bags aren't even worth four dollars. You call in a contractor to whip you up a wheelbarrow or two, you're gonna spend at least five, six, seven hundred dollars. Save that money, reinvest it into your right back into your home. Okay guys, a little more water. I made it painful for you, but let's put some more water in, you'll see it'll get easier. Nice and easy with the pail though, Josh, I'll guide you. Okay, try mixing it up now. You'll notice it'll be easier. See how it flows easier? But always remember, like you're doing, Ethan, pull it from the bottom and then flip it over. There you go, you gotta scrape the bottom of the wheelbarrow. There you go, Josh. Now, for those of you at home, for larger projects, you can actually rent an electric concrete mixer. You can rent that at the big box stores. And if your project's really immense, you can call in truck concrete. But for a couple of bags, for one or two posts, nothing beats doing it by hand in a wheelbarrow. Get the family involved, get the teenage kids involved. Nothing wrong with some physical activity. So Josh, lots, lots different than Durabond 90 or drywall mud? A lot different, a lot harder. <laughs> That's okay. As Bob says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Exactly. Now you can add mixing concrete to your uh, list of accomplished trades. So see the powder in the back, guys? That's what you want to do now is shovel the bottom, bring it to the top to expose any white powder. That way you don't have white powder remaining. Everything's thoroughly mixed. It's all about flipping it and flipping it and continually flipping it. Okay, Josh, a little more water. Okay. Now again, not a big deal. If it gets too soupy, we can cut open another bag. See, I like that, Josh. Bring it up about a foot and then slop it down. See, that's a nice mix. Too many people putting fence posts in, in plain earth. So they'll bore their hole, then they simply backfill it with the same earth that came out. That's, that's not the right way to do it. If you want your post to last, your fence to last, you really need concrete. For the viewers at home, this is essentially it. That's how you mix concrete. Thank you very much to my team members here. Josh has been with us for quite some time now. Although he started out as co-op, Ethan that you met earlier in the program, he's our new co-op student. And I hope his teacher's watching. All right, for the next step now, we're gonna start shoveling and tamping. So we're gonna show you the procedure. Josh, couple of shovelfuls into the sauna tube. Okay, Ethan, let him get at least two more in. Great job, Josh. You can get a little bit leaked there because we still got to do some backfill as long as you don't get it all over the lawn.
Okay, Josh, give us a minute now. What Ethan's doing now is he's tamping. Every couple of shovels, you want to make sure that you're tamping. Yeah, get the other shovel out of the way, Josh. Ethan, slow down a sec. Stay there. I want to get in for the viewers, if I can. All right, tamp it. Make sure you tap behind the post too. Now for those of you at home that are somewhat professionals, you may realize that Bob's 4x4 is not exactly center. It was center before the break earlier, however we had to readjust it in order to be plumb against the house side and against the other side here. So ideally you do want your post in the center, but I think we'll be fine here. A post that would suffice for this would be uh, well, the form for the post would be an 8-inch sauna tube. We have a 12-inch here, so we're using uh, quite a lot more concrete, so that'll suffice. All right, Josh, keep going. and give it a nice tamp. All right, guys, quick prep now. Josh, Ethan, Bob's got to run, got to hit the store, got to grab some supplies. Can I trust you guys to work at lightning speed? Of Thumbs up, everyone. Lightning speed. And that's how you do it, folks. Nice, easy DIY project for the family. As Bob always loved to say, when you love what you do, it's not work. It's a labor of love. And here's the finished product, project. Brand new post. Rebuilt the fence section. And a nice gate. Bob could not have done it without Josh Coles, Ethan, our co-op student, and of course, you haven't seen him on the show, but Frank Lorcello was also here as well. May all your projects go this smoothly, and most importantly, may you enjoy all your projects. Welcome back to Just Ask Bob Live. Hope you enjoy the footage, and don't you just love it when my men work that fast? Bob loves to see that, and I'm sure every employer would. All kidding aside, they're great workers, they're great helpers, we're very fortunate. See, these are troubled economic times that we live in with COVID-19. A lot has changed here. In past seasons, Cable 14 would happily arrive to all our job sites 
uh, several times in fact and take the footage, do the editing, produce and air the program. What's very different than this, this year is you can see I'm alone here in studio. There's a social distancing aspect. Also on the job sites, all of the footage is shot by myself and my employees. So while some of it may be unsteady at times, we're not professionals, we don't claim to be on the camcorder. However, we all are professionals at our trade. Now don't forget to contact us. We're in the second half of the program. We're live, so get your home rental questions ready. Email askbob at cable14.com, tweet at just ask Bob, or pick up the phone and call 905-645-3232. We'll be back right after this break. COVID-19 continues to impact almost every aspect of our lives here in Hamilton. And on our next town hall, I'll be joined by Mayor Fred Eisenberger, Paul Johnson, and Dr. Elizabeth Richardson as we answer your questions about COVID-19 here in the city of Hamilton. Please join me on our next live COVID-19 town hall on Thursday, November the 26th, beginning at 7 p.m. right here on Cable 14. on your network of friends for connection, your network of colleagues for collaboration, your social network for sharing, or your TV network for entertainment. It's because you also count on your network. Learn more at networksyoucancounton.ca. Come watch Hammer D20, the show that focuses on the nerdy side of Hamilton. From video games, to comic books, to board game cafes, to Magic the Gathering, to Warhammer, to cosplay, to whatever else there is. I try to look at all the magical things Hamilton has to offer. This is just the beginning. The end of hunger is a long way ahead, but because of you, we've been able to help tens of thousands during this COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of those who live with food insecurity, right here in Toronto, thank you. The road to recovery will be especially difficult for those with insufficient incomes. We need your help to make sure everyone's right to food is realized. We need your help to end hunger in this city. Welcome back to Just Ask Bob Live. Don't forget, your questions may be featured on a future project and answered through our real renovation job site footage. So make sure you send them in. We have an email here on the screen. Hello, Bob. My installer told me that I can stand on my new quartz countertop and that it won't break. I need to stand on it to install a light fixture. Bob, I really value your expertise and want and need your opinion on this. Bill and Margaret from Hamilton. Wow, Bill and Margaret, thank you. If you really value Bob's expertise, do not, do not stand on your countertop. Uh, again, this, this, this has nothing to do with weight. I don't know you, I haven't met you. I don't care if you're, if you're slim or you're not slim, it has nothing to do with your weight. Nobody, nobody should stand on a quartz countertop, granite countertop, Corian countertop, anything that's solid, anything that's solid. Do not stand on it. That installer doesn't know what he's talking about. He shouldn't be telling you that. Now, last year, we did a quartz countertop installation on season six of the Just Ask Bob show, and I was very, very careful. You see, the point of that show to answer the viewer's email was in regards to uh, contest, so to speak, what my top pick is between quartz and between granite. And the winner by the end of that show was quartz for several reasons. Now the quartz, because it has a lot of resins in it, it has flexibility. So it can actually flex a little. So there's that bit of give before it snaps. Granite 
no flex it's completely from mother nature there's no uh, there's nothing man-made or man added into it so even with that being said the quartz does have more flexibility but please don't stand on it it's just it's not worth the risk when you hear that sound that crack or that snap that's just gonna break your heart now if I remember correctly so I've been yakking for a long while now but yes uh, this is in relation to changing a light fixture okay that's fine there's some ways around it now I wish you'd send me some photographs that would help so the viewers at home help Bob to help you send videos send photographs different perspectives that helps so what I'm gonna tell you now is just an idea I don't know for sure if it'll work in your home now what you can do is set up sort of a ladder plank scaffold system you want a ladder on both sides of the uh, well I'm thinking here it's a peninsula well if it was a peninsula or an island you set up a ladder on both sides run a plank across and you gotta have some balance to you uh, another way to do it is if this is a regular countertop area and you've got your upper cabinets again try to set up another two ladders away from the one you're on have a plank between them and you're gonna lean your weight on that one plank and then possibly put some of your weight on the upper cabinet so again it's not easy to explain if you're uncertain again I don't recommend you stand on your countertop possibly if you don't feel safe bring in a contractor and make certain you get it in writing that they can replace that light fixture without bearing any of their weight on your nice new quartz countertop if it is new either way take good care of it okay we have another question here Bob should I rent or purchase my home's hot water tank what are some pros and cons this is from Brent from Ancaster Brent I love the question I love it because I honestly don't believe it's been a long 11 years now but I do not think I've ever ever done a show segment episode any type of uh, question answering relating to hot water tanks but I do have strong opinions on it and I do give those opinions to my customers when they ask or when people email me or obviously through my own business you have to do the math now in, in my research right from my parents home growing up to my own my own home homes and my customers homes I would say the average hot water tank lasts well over 15 years sometimes 20 and that's even with people not maintaining it there are a few ways to maintain a hot water tank to try to exceed maximize or get that longevity as close as you can to the 20 year mark so let's look at 15 as an average that's a non-maintained hot water tank because it's a rental you're renting who cares you pay every month it breaks whoever you're whoever you're renting it from it's on them they must legally maintain it repair it or replace it in the event that it breaks because you're paying your rent that's the reasoning now with that being said looking at 15 years as an average so for the viewers at home now you know your utility bills because there's approximately two or three different designs of hot water tanks each range in price you take that rent you multiply it by 12 then you multiply 12 months for the year then you multiply it by 15 find out that price then visit your big box stores and find out the price of the hot water tanks they have now not to knock the big box stores but in reality they cater to DIY they're gonna have a lesser quality unit find a gas installer gas hot water tank appliance installer ask them what their brands are ask them what their warranties are in most most cases they're gonna have the premium quality tanks you can buy that tank in many cases it's done you've paid for it it's done the amount anywhere from three to five years where you'd be paying on rent you break even with owning the tank so if the tank lasts 10 years the next 10 years you're rent free so there's a lot of financial dollars and cents in buying your own tank and once and for all ripping up the rental agreement now quickly let's talk pros and cons you rent the tank you pay forever it's warranted it's covered that's about the pro there for renting what are the cons you're paying forever I mean even a lease vehicle gets paid off at some point that whole water tank you're gonna be paying it off till till you're in the ground so now purchasing the hot water tank what are the pros and cons the pros are you buy it you pay it off you own it the cons are if it breaks down 
you have to pay to have it serviced. Now again, think about it. How many of you live in a home now and you've rented that same tank for 10, 15 years or 20 and you've barely had it serviced once? Think, use that analogy, do the math, do your research. Top pick for Bob is absolutely most definitely buy the tank above and beyond having the rental agreement. We're gonna take a quick break. Keep those questions coming. Just ask Bob Live, we'll be right back. During these past few months, I've encountered some challenging situations as an emergency department physician, but we are passionate about helping patients. This is not just our commitment, it's our calling. When you give the gift of health this holiday season and support Hamilton Health Sciences Foundation, you are helping caregivers like me have the resources we require to deliver the best possible care. Please give the greatest gift of all, the gift of health. COVID-19 continues to impact almost every aspect of our lives here in Hamilton. And on our next town hall, I'll be joined by Mayor Fred Eisenberger, Paul Johnson, and Dr. Elizabeth Richardson as we answer your questions about COVID-19 here in the city of Hamilton. Please join me on our next live COVID-19 town hall on Thursday, November the 26th, beginning at 7 p.m. right here on Cable 14. It's about sharing and caring. It's about doing and belonging. It's about living life to its fullest. And it's about laughing out loud. We are L'Arche Canada, and we're about witnessing and sharing the gifts of all people. Learn more about us today. Are you free on Monday nights and looking for the hottest game in town? It's right here on Cable 14, Kiwanis TV Bingo, giving away a $5,000 prize board each and every week, all while supporting children and youth in Hamilton. See you Mondays at 7. Welcome back to Just Ask Bob Live. We're live here in the studio for the remainder of the show. So get your home rental questions ready and send them in. Email them at askbob at cable14.com. Tweet them at Just Ask Bob or pick up the phone. I'm old school. I welcome a call. 905-645-3232. That call will allow you to be entered into our contest. Contest to win one of four Home Depot $50 gift cards to get you up and off the couch to tackle your own to-do list. All you have to do, call in the live show, hit Bob with your hardest home rental question. For full contest details, go to cable14.com slash Bob contest. And best of luck to you. We have another email here. Hello, Bob. I'm told my brick chimney needs a concrete cap. Looks like the brick layers only slope, slopped mortar on the last course of brick and called it a day. Can, you do the, can I do this myself? I would appreciate any tips you can offer. This is from Stefan from Hamilton. Thank you very much for the email. That makes a lot of sense and it's the right time of year now to tackle that because you've got a limited window between now and when the weather gets too cold. Stefan, I'm going to run you through some of the details here, but also very important, very important site for you to remember. Our site, www.justaskbob.com. Again, that's www.justaskbob.com. That'll lead you to our Just Ask Bob YouTube, YouTube channel. This is a teaching channel. This is an archive of 11 years of Just Ask Bob, right from half hour shows to two to three minute segments on Hamilton Life. I believe we have over 120 or 130 episodes on there. Jump to the playlist, season six, Just Ask Bob on Chimneys, where we actually did a job like that in response to an email. We did some repair on the mortar joints, 
and then we put the cap on. Now, let's talk about why your chimney is the way it is. Honestly, I think the bricklayers may have been in a rush. Maybe it was a Monday job, maybe a Friday job, maybe even a Sunday. When they don't want to spend on the cap or they don't have a cap in place, the bricks have three holes in them. So what they simply do, like you said in the email, they slop mortar on top of the holes. Hopefully they pack it, fill in the holes, slop more mortar. And if they're conscientious, at least a little, they'll slope the mortar, tear it so that the rain sheds off of it. Now, what's wrong with that? I mean, it's an effort, but it's not the right way. The very last brick on any chimney is the weak spot. Even if you think of your home's walls, that last course of brick, I could flick it up with my thumb practically. Try pulling a brick down five, six, seven courses below that. It'll take you two hours to pull it out with an air chisel. So gravity is what you need. Gravity is what helps. A pre-made, pre-sloped concrete cap has heft to it. That's the gravity that holds the bricks in place. Also, it's seamless. It's silky smooth, made that way prefab so that the rain will shed away. Also, it has an overlap. Approximately two to three inches overlaps around the sides and underneath it is ground in with a grinder, a drip edge, a groove. So when the rain sheds across the pre-made chimney cap, as the water curves and comes back towards the brick, it'll shed and drop straight down because of the drip edge. So there's a whole host of scientific reasons, building code design, why you need a concrete chimney cap. Now, Stefan, as far as if you're going to tackle this yourself or what you need to do, hope you're comfortable on ladders, tie yourself off. That cap is extremely, extremely heavy, and you've got to carry that up the ladder to the roof. Now, if I may make a suggestion, if it's too heavy for you, you can also order or purchase these caps in two pieces. So that's the key now. Two-piece cap, you are going to have a joint, but it may save you a lot of grief in carrying the cap to the top. So everything I've just described, www.justaskbob.com, playlist season six, name of the episode, Just Ask Bob on, Ch on Chimneys. And you can actually watch me installing a concrete chimney cap. So we're very pleased that through that teaching database, we can refer you and bounce you back and forth to nearly 11, year, well, 11 years, not nearly, but actually 11 years next month, December, of home improvement DIY episodes. Best of luck to you, sir. Oh, we have Rebecca on the line. Hi, Bob. Thank you for taking my call. So thank you for um, calling. I have a question about, we have a home that's probably about 50 years old, and it has a um, block foundation, and there's cracks in it. Now, what is the best um, that we can pick on the market to fill the cracks in? Now, Rebecca, are the cracks in the joints of the blocks, or are they in the face of the block? They're in like the, the joints. Okay, okay, so what you need is tuck pointing. If they're in the joints, you can use any regular mortar. It's not expensive, less than $10 a bag, but the key is, Rebecca, that you have to chip and chisel out. You have to enlarge the crack. So if your crack's just hairline, and you just mm -hmm. fill in a hairline amount, that'll pop out. You have to, okay. you, I mean, are your cracks hairline, or is there a lot of mortar missing? There's a lot of mortar missing. Even better for you. It's actually, you know, Mother Nature's done some of the, the hard work for you then. I okay. mean, still use a chisel and clean it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, you want to wet it as well, dampen it, you know, scrape out any loose, any loose pieces of mortar, and then you follow the instructions. Uh, again, I just put out my website out there, but if you follow us also, I've done many, many episodes where exactly what I'm describing, I've showed you the mortar mix to, to the viewers, I've mixed it and I've installed it. But it's a project where, is this going to be DIY or are you thinking of hiring it out? No, we're going to do it. I'm very proud of you. Do it yourself because to give you an example now, again, I don't know how big your home is or what type of an area you have, but you may be able with you and your family or friends to knock that project off for less than $20. You bring in a contractor, I don't care how small an amount of a job it is, you could be looking at anywhere from $500 to $1,000 to three, four times that much if it's a big job. Okay, appreciate that. So just ordinary mortar. Or That's ordinary, now, but the key though is too though, ordinary mortar mix if you're filling in the joints. Now, right. do you have any areas where the face of the block is damaged? 
We haven't gotten to all of it. Okay, but in the event that you do find an area where the face is damaged, then you need a mortar mix that has a latex additive in it. Some manufacturers call it a vinyl patch because that allows it to stick. See, ordinary mortar doesn't have a lot of stick, stick to it. But when you're putting it inside a cavity, it stays put because it's, it's keying into the cavity, which is fine. If, you ha if you're trying to repair the face of your block, that's not called tuck pointing, that's parging. So you would buy a parging mix or a mortar with a latex, a glue additive in it, because then it's creamier. It's basically the additive in it allows it, to, gives it stick, allow, gives it adhesion so it would stick to the face of the block. Okay, so is there a good name for the no, like, or does it matter? Like, you know, is there a uh, name? No, I mean, uh, honestly, I've used Quickrete. Uh, Quickrete's a great brand. Any of the brands pretty well that the big box centers sell are fine. Okay. Okay. Best of perfect. luck to you. Good luck on the project. Okay, thank you so much, Bob. You're welcome. Okay, bye. We have another email here. Hello, Bob. Why are storm doors no longer offered in you home construction seems like they are a thing of the past Samantha from Ancaster yes Samantha most definitely storm doors are a thing of the past now if we look at old old Hamilton back then all doors were wood so your entry door was wood wood has the worst R value ever not only is it not have any insulating properties but the problem with wood is it's unstable to moisture and temperature changes. So the wood of the door, including the wood of the jam, will, will, sh will sh uh, expand and contract. So you have a terrible seal. On top of that, you have a door that isn't insulated. So in those cases, they installed storm doors. It was just the way they did it back then. Now, modern construction, the last 20, maybe 25, 30 years, steel doors are insulated. Storm doors are a thing of the past. Now, a couple of exceptions and a reason for this, or a couple of different reasons. Generally, most, storm do most steel entry door manufacturers, they don't recommend a storm door because in the summertime, if you don't keep the screen open, heat will be generated, at times excessive heat, depending again which direction your home's facing, or if you've got a roof overhang, or the absence of that, that heat generated won't damage the metal door, but it will damage, in many cases, the plastic trim that surrounds the window. So it doesn't matter if it's a half moon window, a half light glass, three quarter glass, or glass top to bottom. Unless it's a full steel door with a six panel design, you're okay, but if there's any type of a glass in it, the glass is always surrounded by some type of a PVC plastic trim. So it's very, very important that in those cases, you generally, I mean, you can have a storm door, but you need to keep the, keep the window open to let air in and heat to escape between that closure. So always keep that in mind. Check with the manufacturer. You don't want to create an extreme amount of heat within that tight space of, you know, in most cases, four, maybe five, six inches between the storm door and between the door. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. COVID-19 continues to impact almost every aspect of our lives here in Hamilton. And on our next town hall, I'll be joined by Mayor Fred Eisenberger, Paul Johnson, and Dr. Elizabeth Richardson as we answer your questions about COVID-19 here in the city of Hamilton. Please join me on our next live COVID-19 town hall on Thursday, November the 26th, beginning at 7 p.m. right here on Cable 14. Mom and Dad used to argue about everything, especially about Dad's drinking. It drove me crazy. It got so bad, I couldn't do my homework. I couldn't concentrate. I absolutely refused to let any of my friends come to our house for any reason. I would have been humiliated if anyone found out how much my dad drank and how loud my mom screamed at him. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful. The only thing that happened is my mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. Her relationship with my dad really changed. I asked mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to Alateen. 
I wanted to see if I could have a better relationship with my dad. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or Alateen family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. Hi folks, my name is Amy Sloan and I'm going to be the host of a new show called Friends on 14. It's a show for our seniors. It's got music, trivia, it's got uh, exercise and all kinds of fun stuff for seniors. Join me on Monday nights after bingo at 8 p.m. on Cable 14. Welcome back to Just Ask Bob Live. Now obviously we're nearing the end of the program. Throughout the week, don't call in, but you can send your tweets, you can send your emails, and once again, one of those questions may be featured on a future episode. I wanna thank all the viewers, all the people that call in, all the people that send their emails. And please don't forget, www.justaskbob.com. Again, that's www.justaskbob.com. Click on the Just Ask Bob show at the top, pause, fast forward, rewind, learn at your own pace. Thank you.